Hi everyone, my name is Bridie and I am the Med Mentor Social Media Director. I'm also a final year medical student. Hi, and I'm Emma. I'm also a final year medical student and the founder and president of Med Mentors. So today what we've done is put together a video where we'll be talking about how to do a medical interview question and today's focus is on public health. So these questions come up quite often and they deal with a whole variety of different public health challenges. What you want to focus on in this sort of style of question is focusing on upstream factors or primary factors. So what we can do to prevent people getting sick rather than treat them when they're already sick. Even though it doesn't seem like it's doctoring per se, it's actually what medicine's all about. Prevention is better than cure. So let's get stuck in and do a practice question. So today, Emma is playing the role of the interviewer in an MMI, and my role will be as the student. So we're going to give an example, I guess, of how not to answer the question and then pick it apart a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and give an example answer. It's worth mentioning at this time as well, neither of us are professional interviewers, and we're just going with what we know. So our answers won't be perfect, but we try to give a bit of a contrast between an answer that we think doesn't cover what you need to do and then one that does. You are a doctor in a rural town where obesity rates are much higher than the state average and physical activity levels are low. The local council is applying for a grant to improve the health of the town's citizens. They have asked for your suggestions for projects that could be implemented to reduce obesity and to improve activity levels. Discuss one project you would suggest to the panel. Yeah, okay. So um, I'm the doctor in a rural town. Um, so and obviously obesity is a real problem. And I've actually read um, somewhere that like um, obesity can be basically reversed with a gastric bypass surgery. Um, yeah, so they're really effective and like basically patients lose all the weight that they had. So I think what I would be um, like suggesting to the panel would be some sort of program where we could like subsidize people for um, gastric gastric bypass surgeries once they sort of get past a certain BMI so that we can ultimately stop the people who are, you know, really obese getting more sick. Yeah. All right, you have a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you monitor whether your project was having an impact? So obviously, like, we could just look at how many people got gastric bypass surgery so just kind of look at the total number yeah all right you have another follow-up question as a doctor in in the town how could you advocate for improved health and well-being of the town's citizens well like I think um so like in light of my in light of my um suggestion I think that it would like I could refer people to um like gastric bypass surgeons so like you know I could be sort of the primary care person that refers them on so they like know where the, where they're going and you know what to do and I guess like if they needed help with like weight loss stuff I could you know I could like direct them in the right sort of place okay we still have about 30 seconds left is there anything else you'd like to add no that's everything thanks all right, thank you. So thanks for watching our example of what not to do. I hope you were able to pick out a few things yourself that didn't go quite right with that interview. First things first, I think you might've noticed I didn't make eye contact with the examiner. And although you might feel really nervous and it isn't gonna be an in-person interview if you're watching this in COVID times, you still need to try your best to make eye contact with the examiner so that they know that you're really engaged. Secondly, I was using lots of filler words like, um, like, you know. That you, um, you had, you, 
you you could you do and even though it's really challenging to not use these words and you will slip in a few from time to time you want to reduce it as much as possible it does take a lot of practice not to use filler words while you're talking but it makes a huge difference to the clarity of your expression finally you can see that i chose a tertiary intervention the thing that i went for was gastric bypass surgery that is something really downstream that's fixing a problem that's already there how public health works is not like that and even though as doctors you do see um, secondary and tertiary pre prevention you want to focus on what you can do from a primary prevention point of view gastric bypass sur surgery certainly isn't that it then made it difficult for me in the final question about advocacy to really show how i could demonstrate my advocacy in summary you want to try and pick something upstream so that you can speak to further questions down the track if they do come up handing over to emma now who will uh, give me some feedback so as the interviewer, it can be really hard to engage with your interviewee if they're not making any eye contact with you. They also come across maybe less confident and less prepared if they're not making any eye contact. So don't be scared to really try to engage through the eye contact. It can be really hard to get your personality across if it's an online interview, so eye contact is key. Bridie's answers were also quite short. She didn't elaborate or give herself much room to move with them. Would have been great if she could have given a few more examples or started off a bit broad and then brought it in and honed things in a little bit more. She was short, sharp and to the point, but built a wall around her answer there and we didn't get much more out of her, which is a shame. And again, as an interviewer, hearing a lot of ums and likes and you knows, it really comes across that the student's very nervous, which we understand this is a very nerve wracking experience and they will cut you a bit of slack for that. You don't want to come across so nervous that you'll, your entire point is lost and it's hard to concentrate or find your point at all because it's just so jumbled in so Many of these filler words. It is good to really practice and have clarity on what you're trying to say and what your point is that you're trying to leave the interviewer. If you can cut back on those, that'd be great. I, and I think if you interview your peers, you might come across this, this feeling as well. You have to sort of put yourself in the shoes of the medical school that you're interviewing at and think, why are they asking me this question? Yes, it's about rising obesity levels, but it's also for the medical school to see how you fit into our medical culture, how you fit in as a medical student, how will you be a great junior doctor? These are the things that we need to be able to picture about you before we offer you a place at our school. Did we get a picture of who you are in this answer? We know that this question has asked a very specific things about obesity, but try to slip in a bit about yourself as well and a little bit of your own personal flair and passion for things. So if you have an experience that sort of adds to this, like perhaps you have experience working at a gym or you've seen a dietitian or a nutritionist or something in your life, try to weave that in and tell us why there's a bigger picture for you in this and why you'll be passionate to support this sort of work in the future. As a doctor, when it comes to advocating for public health, I think it's really important to look at primary prevention strategies. And when it comes to obesity and decreased exercise levels in a community, what we really want to do is get the entire community together in a way that's productive and ultimately address it at the cause rather than address the problems that it causes down the track. So my suggestion to the panel would be to be cre uh, creating more bike lanes in the area as well as a bike path around the area and then using places like schools and workplaces to encourage uh, ride to work days. So children and adults alike are getting incidental exercise whilst um, commuting, for example, and they feel safe uh, when they do want to do activities like riding their bike. So riding a bike is excellent both from a health and well-being perspective. It gets kids out. It has a great social side to it. And it also means that children are getting their daily exercise and adults are getting their daily exercise. And it can also help with weight loss as well. So that would be my suggestion to this panel. Create a safe riding environment for the local town so children and adults can ride their bikes to and from school and work. Okay, your follow-up question. How would you monitor whether your project was having an impact? I think this is quite challenging because as I mentioned before, it is a primary prevention. So what that means is ultimately it will take quite a while before we do see, I guess, the tertiary impacts of this strategy. However, I think we could monitor the usage of the bike path to see if it actually is being used. 
we could do surveys of children at school to find out how they're getting to and from school. And we could also do surveys of adults as well and see whether they're using it to ride to and from work, say with commuting, or whether they're using it as a leisure activity. So we could monitor it that way. And then from the tertiary perspective, so looking at how people are presenting to their GP, seeing if we're having a decrease in the incidence of obesity and low activity level related diseases. So see if we're actually seeing a meaningful reduction in things like blood pressure, like high cholesterol, like cardiovascular conditions, and see if there is a meaningful impact knowing that it will take time for those changes to be seen. That's my idea in terms of how we measure it. I'm sure the panel would also have some ideas as well, but that would be what I would suggest. All right, and your last follow-up question. As a doctor in the town, how could you advocate for improved health and well-being of the town's citizens? So I think as a doctor in the town wanting to advocate for improved well-being on the basis of the suggestion that I've just made, I would have a two-pronged approach. My first thing would be to lead by example, and my second thing would be advocacy. So for leading by example, I would make sure that I was doing the right thing, that I was eating well um, and doing exercise. And in, in light of what I've mentioned before, I'd be the one riding my bike for leisure and for commuting. It's something that I currently do and I am quite passionate about and has definitely improved my own health. So it's something that I would continue to do and make a habit of. Secondly is advocacy. So I would be supporting all of the town's residents in their desire to get out and get more fit. And when patients came in for anything in the clinic, I would definitely be encouraging them to use the bike path and to use that as a commuting opportunity as well as a leisure activity with their kids. I would also encourage the local schools to get involved for things like ride your bike to school day or ride your bike to work day. And I would promote healthy eating to all of my all of my clients that would be my strategy for improving the health of the town excellent thank you everyone for watching this video um, i hope you can tell i was a little bit nervous myself even answering these questions and nerves are a normal thing this was about public health but we'll be doing a whole variety of topics that come up in interviews so keep your eye out on our youtube and tune on in uh, when we have our next video and we'll be covering topics like empathy like ethics our motivation to be a doctor they're all coming your way and if you have any ideas about what bridie could have done better in this video please leave comments below we can answer you in the chat don't be too mean <laughs>